This video is going to go over numbers 31 through 34 on your Algebra 1 Keystone Review packet. Let's start with 31. Juan scored 24 points in the first half of the basketball game. He scored P points in the second half of the game. Write an expression to determine the number of points he scored in all. Then find the number of points he scored in all if he scored 11 points in the second half of the game. So since we're finding the number of points he scored in all, we know that he's going to score points in the first half. And he's going to score points in the second half. So think about what operation would make sense here. How many points does he score in total? Total a lot of times tells us that we want to add. And, you know, he's scoring points in the first half of the game and in the second half of the game. So addition is the best operation there. He scored 24 points in the first half, and he scored P points in the second half. So your expression is 24 plus P. That's going to really rule out B, C, and D already. Then plug it in. If he scored 11 points in the second half, how much did he score total? So this is going to equal our total. Put in 11 for P, and let's see what our total is then. It'd be 35. So the answer is A. Number 32, Francisco purchased X hot dogs and Y hamburgers at a baseball game. He spent a total of $10. The equation below describes the relationship between the number of hot dogs and the number of hamburgers purchased. So a lot of times what I like to do is take this information here and label it on that equation. Let's label what each thing represents. Francisco purchased X hot dogs. So X is the number of hot dogs. And Y hamburgers, and Y then is hamburgers. And he spent a total of $10. So this is the total cost. Okay, so we have three times, three, three for each hot dog plus four for each hamburger equals the total cost. Think about what those three and four stand for, even before we go on to here. Since I'm taking three per each hot dog, and I'm taking four per each hamburger, and in the end I get a total cost or I get money, this three and four is, has to be the cost of each one. So think about what that equation means. Each hot dog costs $3, and each hamburger costs $4 is what it's saying. The ordered pair 2, 1 is the solution of the equation. What does the solution 2, 1 represent? Okay, so you don't even have to solve anything. All you have to do is interpret what the solution means. Remember the order, the order of the points in an ordered pair is always x, then y. So what does x stand for? We already said x stands for hot dogs. And what does y stand for? y stands for hamburgers. So let's read the options. Hamburgers cost two times as much as hot dogs. Well, remember we said that X is the number of hot dogs and Y is the number of hamburgers, so that has nothing to do with the cost here. What about B? Francisco purchased two hot dogs and one hamburger. Ah, oh, that sounds pretty good, actually. Look at this. Purchase two hot dogs and one hamburger. You plug those in. Two times three is six. One times four is four. Six plus four does give me $10. So B sounds pretty good. Well, let's keep going. Just check the other ones. Hot dogs cost $2 each and hamburgers cost $1 each. No, we already said that X stands for the number of hot dogs. And we already determined from this equation, actually, the cost of hot dogs is 3 and the cost of a hamburger is $4. So that's wrong. Francisco spent $2 in every hot dog and $1 in every hamburger. Again, the cost is wrong. So B, that ordered pair represents that Francisco purchased two hot dogs and one hamburger is the correct answer. 33, write an equation that describes a line with the slope equals 2 and the y-intercept equals 3 halves in slope-intercept form. If you don't remember what this is, always take a look at your formula sheet to see if this formula is on there. Slope-intercept form, we should know it. It's y equals mx plus b. And in this form, M stands for the slope, and B stands for the y-intercept. So I just want you to keep it in this form whenever you um, circle, cir whenever, after you plug in, your final answer should stay in that form is what I'm trying to say. 
So plug in what we know here. The slope is 2, so replace m with 2. Keep the x, the x is your variable, and your y is your variable for your ordered pair. So x and y should be part of the equation. And then the y-intercept is 3 halves, so just put that in for b. What was in between there? A, pl a plus sign. Your equation then is y equals 2x plus 3 halves. The correct answer is c. Slope intercept formula, definitely see on the keystone. So remember, memorize that formula. Remind yourself of using that. Um, we use it a lot with functions and equations. So we should know y equals mx plus b. And number 34, write an equation that describes the slope, uh, sorry, it describes the line in slope intercept form. I'm giving you the slope and I'm giving you a point this time. I'm not giving you the y intercept. So we can still start with y equals mx plus b. This time, we don't know b. We're going to have to find the y-intercept. But remember what you're given at a point. This first letter, or this, so this first number stands for the x value. The second number stands for the y value. And the slope is m. So replace everything in the equation that you know. We don't know the plus b. But it's going to keep, that's going to stay there. But we do know that the y could be negative 2. And the m could be 4. How do I know that? Because m is your slope. And this is an x. So when I put in 3 and negative 2 with the slope, I should be able to solve for my b. You know, 3 out of the 4 variables, this will work. Now remember, your final answer is not just going to be the b. You'll have to get an equation, okay? But let's solve this. Negative 2 equals 4 times 3 is 12 plus b. B is the y-intercept. I need to find it. So I would subtract 12 to isolate it. And my y-intercept, or my B value, is a negative 14. Watch the signs. It's a minus 2 and a minus 12 are both negatives. So add them, keep the sign. Now this is only part of your answer. We have to go back to the y equals mx plus B equation. Now I know what my b is. I have y equals mx plus a negative 14 or just minus a 14. It's the same thing. This was a minus or a negative. So you, you just need a minus or a negative 14. However you want to write it is fine. And now remember you know what m is. m is your slope. Slope is always multiplied by x. So we're going to have 4x minus 14 equals y as the equation. So again, another example where that slope-intercept form is really helpful and you're going to need to know it.